I'm about to tell you about a, a story. It was actually a big cloud over my head for about a year and a half. Didn't expect it to take the twists and turns that it did. I definitely did not expect the outcome that finally came. And I'm going to try and tell it as quickly as I can because there's actually a lot to it, but I'm just going to try and synthesize it down to the, the simplest story. And I'm sure you're going to find it at least interesting. I had a customer who I went to look at his floor and what he had was a pine, not pitch pine or hard pine. It was a, a maybe a larch pine floor. It's a herringbone parquet floor that was running through his dining room, hallway and living room. So you had the living room here, like the hallway coming out here and then the dining room here. And uh, my recommendation to the customer was to get all of it sanded together. And the reason is, is the herringbone pattern actually ran through the door. Now, sometimes it's fitted in a way where there's actually a, 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 the border goes across the doorway. So there's a natural sort of line that you can stop to with the lacquer. Um, and I said, the best way to get a continuous, perfectly clean finish is to sand the floor all the way through all three rooms and lacquer them all together. The other option is we can do the three rooms separately, but there is a possibility that there may be uh, imperfections in the doorways where we, the sanding meets, you know, this one's been sanded and finished and then we've got to sand this side and lacquer it. And, and I said, um, <clears throat> there's a good chance um, that there is gonna be a problem with the lacquer or with the finish. And uh, I say this to manage expectations because normally we can do it very well. And uh, he decided that he wanted to get all three rooms done separately. And um, even when I was doing the first two rooms, I thought, you know, I kept saying to him, oh, it's, you know, we're doing this to try and make sure it blends very well. And, and um, you know, I was hammering home that he should have got all three done. It, it's better for me as well, because I make more money if all three are done at one time. It's, it's the, uh, the economies of scale but it's a better outcome for him as well. But he decided he wanted all three rooms done separately. And uh, did the first room, very happy. Did the second room, very happy. And um, sorry, I just had to check that my uh, microphone was working because I wasn't actually sure if you could hear me. Um, so anyway, we did the first room, he loved it. Uh, we did the second room, he loved it. And we did the hallway and he, he seemed to love it, he seemed to be happy, but um, I didn't receive any payment. So um, now I had gotten a bit of a funny feeling with this guy because um, once he has accepted the job and I had said that there was a deposit of 50%, um, I sent him the invoice and he said, actually, I don't wanna pay 50%, I wanna pay 30% or even 35%. And I just thought, that's a bit strange and um, you know, it's kind of a bad, it's a bad thing if, if you're getting off on a foot like that, because it's kind of like, we don't trust you. That's the kind of vibe that I was getting from him is that he didn't quite trust me. But I just said, look, it's 50%, that's what everyone does. And uh, never really had a problem with anyone else um, with the deposit. So, so eventually he paid and uh, we went through the whole process. And um, two weeks, in fact, I think it was, might, might have been more than that. I just thought, thought oh, he hasn't, he hasn't paid us yet. So um, I contacted him and I said, oh, could you, could you um, finalize the bill? Uh, you know, make the final payment. And uh, he said, well, actually there's a, there's, an, there's a bit of a problem with the finish and we're not quite happy with it. Could you come and touch it up? And I said, okay, where is this, where is this problem? It's in the doorway. So I said, okay, I'll come and look at it. And uh, I, I went over and um, we spent about 10 minutes trying to look for what they had previously said the problem was. And I just put a bit of lacquer on this, this area to keep them happy, you know, rubbed it down. And, um, and then they didn't pay me again. And uh, I said, oh, you know, can you, can you pay the bill? I touched the floor up. He said, oh, it's still not quite right. Uh, and I said, okay, and uh, I popped over again. And um, at this point, the floor was actually filthy. There was, there was splats all over the floor. Um, I actually had to clean this area just before I could actually prep it to, to lacquer it. I, I, I um, taped off around the edge of blocks and I brushed the lacquer in the direction of each individual block on a massive area 
like this uh, in the doorway just to be completely covered. And um, he said, no, it's, it's still not quite right. And I said, well, can you take a picture and send it? And they said, oh, it's imperceptible by a camera. And I thought, right, okay, well, I did actually tell you in the beginning that if we decide to do, do the rooms this way, um, and by the way, the, 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 it was absolutely fine. But I mean, to me, it was more than acceptable. I'm surprised they could see any kind of uh, imperfection. But, um, uh, it, you know, when I manage people's expectations like that, as for when there is an issue, but there wasn't an issue with this one. And um, I said, look, I said to you in the beginning, we will have an issue here. That's how I actually phrased it. There will be a, 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 an issue in the doorway and you just have to kind of live with it. It'll be minimal, but you'll have to live with it. And um, so I said, look, I've, I've been over twice to touch it up, so could you please pay the bill? And he didn't pay the bill, and we were arguing back and forth, and it was really stressing me out. <laughs> um, and it's, it, it sounds, it seems kind of stupid now, but it was really stressing me out for, and I, I would take periods where I just wouldn't even speak to them. And then um, we'd have emails back and forth, so many emails. Um, but after five months, and here comes curveball number one, and I did not expect this whatsoever, and uh, I, be I better just let you have it, because basically what happened is they had a plumber come in and change the radiator, and they said that the, the plumber spilt no more than a cup of water and it had damaged the parquet and from the pictures they sent me I could see straight away the blocks were dark on the ends with spikes coming into the blocks and that's basically where the water has soaked into the ends of the blocks and the blocks were cupped and so you've got the flat surface of a block like this or a board and when there's more moisture on the underside and the underside expands more than the top side it causes it to to cup like this. And I said to them, there's clearly been quite a lot of water that's gone down the sides of the blocks because the blocks are cupping and it's soaked into the ends of the blocks, whilst the, the surface of the blocks where the lacquer is was actually fine. By this point, it was actually um, October. And he said, well, you haven't um, sealed the floor properly. Um, now, this was a hundred year old pine parquet floor. So as I was mentioning before, um, pitch pine is a, or heart pine is it has a lot of a moisture it's got high moisture content so it doesn't expand and contract very much whereas normal pine which is very dry it does expand and contract throughout the year and also you have cumulative shrinkage over the years blocks shrink like this and this was a hundred year old parquet stuck down with bitumen there was bitumen down the sides of the blocks so when there's bitumen down the sides of the blocks you don't get the filler taking to the gaps very well but even when you do we're going into winter, the heating system's coming on, the air is becoming drier and it's sucking moisture out of the blocks. So the gaps are gonna open up. There is no way you can make a herringbone parquet floor absolutely um, waterproof. But still, he insisted it was my fault. I haven't sealed the floor properly and therefore they're not going to pay. And I, I explained to them, and by this point, I, I mean, I was so stressed out. <laughs> And it must sound pathetic, but like, you know, it's, it's just one job after, you know, years of good, you know, I hear a lot of people say that they have problems with certain customers that are problem customers and they don't want to pay or, and I have to admit, I think I've been very lucky, um, but also I think I'm very good at managing expectations. Um, but he insisted that this was my problem, this was my fault, and therefore he's not going to pay. And I was sending him, you know, these long emails with like the science of word, the history, like I, I, I wouldn't leave a stone unturned. I mean, there, there were so many ways that I was, in my mind, I was proving that I was right and he was wrong. He wasn't having any of it. And he said, if you want your money, you have to take it up with the courts. So those were his words. And um, so I thought I'd call his bluff. And this is like how it just escalated. And um, I, I sent him a, I don't know what you call it now, uh, a summons. Well, I, I just sent a, 
it's like from the small claims court. You pay £25, it says, you owe this much money, this person's claiming against you. And um, he filed his defence, like, very quickly, which I thought was strange, um, which is, you know, part of the, the next curveball that's coming. And, um, and so, yeah, we, we ended up going to court, and basically we had to go to this first this small court in a place called Luton, where we appoint a independent inspector. Um, and we both agreed on an independent inspector from the Contract Flooring Association to come and survey the floor and have a look at the floor. And uh, it was at this um, court meeting where curveball number two comes along, where he says that he is a solicitor. So now I find myself taking a solicitor to court and representing myself. And um, I just thought, you know, you can imagine, like, I thought, what? Well, there's no chance, there's no chance. I mean, it stressed me out so much. I can't, I can't beat this guy. He knows all the tricks and, and whatnot. He's, you know, and uh, I just, I felt so hard done by. And um, so there we are. Now I've got an issue that comes five months after I finished the floor that he's trying to not pay me for. And I find out that I'm taking him to court and he's a solicitor. So, um, so it, a lot of time goes by. I mean, the whole thing takes so long and it really was a cloud over my head. Um, and eventually the ind independent inspector comes and has a look at the floor and he's doing all sorts of measurements and stuff. And, um, and he writes up a report and that doesn't come till a few weeks later. And his report agrees with absolutely everything I've said. Um, in fact, it didn't go into as much detail. It was like my version, light, like all the things I've been saying in the email. And um, now at this point, it's a very good idea that, the, that you just decide to um, agree with basically what the independent inspector has said because there's kind of not much point going to court. Um, but he decides that he wants to fight it still. And he's going, not, not just going to say, oh, I've got, a, you know, I've got a way of getting around what the independent inspector has said. I'm going to disagree with him directly and say that it is shoddy workmanship and he didn't seal the floor properly. Um, and so, yeah, we go to court and it's in this, uh, do you know, I should have looked it up before the video, but it's like the main courthouse in London. And it's this massive building right in the center of London, right by the Thames. And uh, I go down there and I am, I'm in my polo shirt and jeans, and I haven't even bought a pen with me, um, and I just look like a scruff. And uh, we go up into this, oh, so, well, first of all, you've got this um, arbitration room where they bring you together, and before you go to court, they try to come to an agreement. And um, in this room, he said, well, how about we just call it quits? How about we just, we both go home, I don't know you anything, you don't know me anything, because um, I'm kind of, I'm looking at maybe losing, you know, double what I was intending to get. Because um, uh, he was also counterclaiming against me to, to get the floor redone. And um, he said, how about we just call it quits? Now, I think I should have smelt blood in the water at this point, but I was still, I was still furious. And um, so, yeah, he said, uh, shall we just call it quits? And I said, no, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not happy with that. Um, and then the arbitrators say to me, what does it say on the um, independent inspector's re report? And I said, well, it agrees with me, it agrees with me 100%. And um, they said, hmm, yeah, okay. And like, so they're not allowed to encourage you or give any kind of bias whatsoever, but I, I kind of, afterwards, I realized they were kind of encouraging me just to let it go to court. And then the next question comes from the other side, and he says, how much are you willing to accept? And I had decided before this that I wanted to know about the court system, and I wanted to go through it, and I was prepared to actually pay, because I just, I want to be confident if I need to go into the court system in future, I just, I want to go through it. And so I said, unless you're prepared to pay everything I'm asking for, then I, that way we'll save an afternoon in court. But if not, it's kind of getting me shaking now. It's, it's, um, <laughs> it's bringing back a lot of memories, but 
Um, and he, he didn't agree to that. So we went into court and uh, yeah, again, I mean, I was, as pathetic as this sounds, I was like shaking. It wasn't shaking, it was like vibrating, like a low level vibrating. Um, and my heart rate was up and I just didn't know what to expect. And uh, and as I said, I was in my jeans and t-shirt and or polo shirt and uh, I didn't have a pen or any papers. And this other guy has a stack of papers like this. And um, so yeah, we went go through the, the all the questions and stuff they ask in court. And uh, at one point I said, um, how long have you known the, the plumber? And um, my customer's wife said, oh, we've known him for 20 years. Um, he's a very good plumber, you know, he's our friend. And I said, well, do you th can you see how it's conceivable that someone like me would think that you're just, you're trying to blame me because we already had an issue and he's your friend. So there were lots of back and forths in the court and there were a load of mess ups and like they didn't have the information and stuff and we just, so she was just going off basically what we were saying. And again, just knowing what I knew and, and the weakness of his argument and I think also the independent report saying that I won. And like, she was about to give her verdict and like, <laughs> it's so pathetic because it's just money. And I, I was already committed to go through this process, but um, like my heart was coming up into my throat and I was like, getting a bit stiff. And uh, she said, we're going to award it to um, the claimant, which is me. And uh, oh, just the feeling of relief. And uh, oh, I, I strolled home that day, or you know, strolled to the train station, got the train home. And uh, yeah, it was just such a brilliant feeling because like now I can say to people, I took a solicitor to court, represented myself and beat him. And it renewed my confidence in the judicial system. I kind of thought that it was going to be like squarely against me and now in retrospect I think I had every angle covered you know and one of the things it did make me learn for any any of the contractors listening is like it was very valuable that I went back and tried to appease them twice so I said there was going to be an issue there they said there was an issue I still tried to fix it they still said there was an issue and I tried to fix it again I did everything that I could to try and keep them happy so um and that that boded very well and it's kind of taught me like always you know if a customer's not happy give as much time and attention as you want because it just it means you've got a stronger case later on and usually it means that your customer's happy in the first place and it's never going to go to court anyway so that is my story of um of uh going to court and uh, i've never had anything before i've never had anything since like that and uh I just think that he was a solicitor and I think he just thought he could push me around and, and that I wouldn't pursue him. I hope you don't think I'm a bad guy for um, for pursuing my customer in the court. But um, anyways, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've had any similar experiences, any of the contractors listening to this. Um, also, and click the like button, please. Like and subscribe. I want to get to 100,000 subscribers. Have a great day. Ah, I've got it off my chest. Bye.